So she's going to give you the inside scoop on Internship 101 because there are specific things that you need to do in order to utilize this. So without further ado, let's have a round of applause for Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, how many graduate students are here? Okay, so it's the same process as undergrads, okay? So does everybody have a form? Everybody got one? Okay, good deal. Oh, you need one? Harriet. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over the process with you. Um, there have been a lot of changes. Um, I'm now the internship assistant under Dr. Dozer, who is our internship coordinator, okay? A lot of students are, they didn't know we had CJ internships, okay? I've come across that here within the last few weeks. Um, okay, so for starting off the internship process, um, you must be a criminal justice major, victim studies or security studies, okay? Um, you must have 90 hours completed in order to do the internship. Um, for graduate students, you have to have 18 hours completed before you can apply for an internship, okay? Um, GPA, you, uh, your overall SHSU GPA is a 2.5 state or local agency and a 3.0 GPA for federal, okay? Any questions on that? Nope, okay, we're moving on. Oh, sorry, yes. Yes, so yes, you can. Okay. So there it is out there, folks. Anybody was wondering, you can do it if you're a CJ minor also. And what are the steps? What are the steps? Well, you have to be a true minor major, your, um, your chair, and the thing to, for that credit to count toward your, you know, your. Okay, so whatever, if you're, if you're, CJ is your minor, so you have to get approval from your chair of whatever degree you're getting in um, to get credit for the internship. Okay, everybody understand that? Are all of y'all CJ majors? Nobody outside the program, outside CJ? You are, what's yours? Uh, okay, and then CJ is your minor or? Yes, okay. So yes, so that answer, I mean, does that help? Okay, good deal. Just wanna make sure everybody understands everything. Okay, so the next step is the pre-application form. And with that form, um, you have to make an appointment with the CJ advisor over at the SAM Center. They are no longer housed here at the CJ Center, okay? So they're all at the CHSS building, okay? Um, so therefore, okay, so you'll make an appointment with the CJ advisor. You're gonna take that pre-application form, okay? They do have copies there. I sent over copies, colored copies. So they should have them. And it's been emailed to them so they can print it out for you, okay? So you're gonna sit there and go over this pre-application um, form with your advisor. So they're gonna fill out how many hours you've completed. Um, they're gonna write down your overall GPA your SHSU um, GPA as well. Um, and then down at the bottom, they're also gonna put, um, let's just say you have 80 hours completed, okay? So that was in the fall. So spring, they're gonna write down how many hours you're taking in the spring, as long as it all totals up to 90 hours being completed before you apply, before you do the internship. Does that all make sense to everybody? Okay, good deal. So the next step after that, don't stop at the pre-application form, and a lot of students are going over and just filling that form out and then coming in and seeing me. And then I have to send you away to go fill out the rest of the forms, okay? So that's not the case. So if you go, there's a, it tells you directions on where to go to find these forms online, okay? So you're gonna go uh, fill out the pre-application form with your SHSU, I mean, a uh, CJ advisor. Then the next step, part two, is the internship packet for the undergraduate. Disregard the bottom part if you're um, 
uh, undergrad student, because the bottom part is for graduate students, okay? So you all can see that for my graduate students. Y'all can see what forms are needed as well, okay? So you must fill out all of these forms. They have to be printed in color, okay? You can go to the library and fill out these forms, okay? And you can print them out in color there. Does that make sense? Okay. One of the, two of the documents, um, one, you must get two passport photos and you can get those from the Bearcat One Card office. Okay, they'll take your picture, print out the forms right then and there. Then you'll also need to request your um, official school transcript from the registrar's office, okay? So they're gonna give it to you in an envelope. You can request it online or you can go to the office and request it there. So they're gonna print it out and they're gonna give it to you in an envelope. It has to come to me with it sealed, okay? So don't open it. I will do that, okay? Any questions? If you request less, if you haven't requested any um, I think it's less than five, is that right, Shelly? So it's, if it's less than five, they won't charge you for it, okay? So if you have five or more, then if, yes, of course, they're gonna charge you for it. All right, now my information, okay, the next thing is now you must make an appointment, okay? So you have to go through uh, your MySAM account, go in through Campus Connect and make an appointment, okay? There, there's no more walk-in hours. Okay, and if you have problems with that, you can always call me and I can walk you through the step. Okay, my phone number is up at the top. And then on the back, if you have any other questions, the CJ internship um, email address is on the back of this page. You can email any questions there. Dr. Dozer does see these emails as well. So there may be times where you may get um, a response from me or from him. Okay, does anybody have any questions about the forms so far? Yes. That is correct. Because if you don't have them, I'm just going to send you away, and you're going to have to go fill it out, and then you're going to have to come back to me. So I've had a lot of students, and some get frustrated with me, but um, they'll just have the pre-application form, and then I'll have to send them away and tell them, hey, you're missing the entire packet. So make sure you have it all done before coming to me. Um, and if you have any questions or have problems with any of the forms, then just call me or email me, and I'll do the best I can. Does that all make sense to everybody? Any questions on the forms? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So if you go to um, Sam Houston homepage, and up at the top, in the middle, is a uh, fast links. If you click on there, go to see, uh, criminal justice. So you'll click there. And then in the right-hand side, in a box, you're going to see where it says student resources. So if you click on that, and then there's going to be a drop-down arrow, you click on internships. And then right in the middle of the page, it's going to say getting started. So click there, and then it'll have um, all the documents listed there for you. She asked where to find the documents if all the forms were online, and yes, they are. Okay, any other questions? Now, on some of the forms, it'll list, it'll have you uh, what agency that you're wanting to apply for. If you're not sure at the time, you can just leave that, um, blank. you can just leave it blank, okay? Okay, so the next step I'm gonna go over is once you complete these documents, you go online, you make an appointment with me, um, you come in, you bring me your documents, okay? So then I'm gonna submit those to Dr. Dozer for his approval. Once he signs off on it, then I'll notify you um, through email and make sure you write your SAM email address on there, okay? Don't give me your Gmail or Yahoo account. Put your SAM email account on there on the forms, so I know where to, um, so I can email you back, letting you know if it's been approved or denied, okay? So once Dr. Dozer reviews it, he approves it, he signs off on it, then I'll notify you. Then at that point, you can contact the agency. Okay, do not contact an agency until you've, uh, until you've been approved. And then if you need assistance with an agency, then just email us. E email the CJ internship if you have any issues and then we'll try to help you. 
okay? I do have a list of agencies um, in the office, but they're also listed on the website as well. So right before you go, you click on the uh, hyperlink that says getting started, if you scroll down, it's, there's a list of agencies there. Okay, and then if you keep scrolling down, it'll list them, um, they'll have several like state, federal, they'll, oh yes, yes. So on that um, homepage, uh, you're gonna see the list of the agencies there, okay? So if you're not sure about what you wanna do, you can look there, okay? Now what Shelly was just asking, or to mention, um, if you're applying for a federal agency, you have to apply a year in advance, okay? So, but on that uh, pre-application form, that's where it's gonna list out how many hours you're gonna take per semester, okay? So that note, lets Dr. Dozer know that, you know, by then, you're gonna have your 90 hours completed. Okay, even though you're applying, you have to submit your documents a year in advance. Okay, so the next step after that, let's just say you get your, you, yes ma'am. Yes, you can. You can, you can apply to an agency that's not on the list, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, so the next step, once you contact your agency, you go on your interview, you get the internship. The next thing that I need is an email uh, from that agency stating um, that you got the internship, you're gonna, complete, you're gonna complete it with them, okay? I need confirmation because I'm gonna print that email out and it's gonna go in your file, okay? So I need confirmation from that agency that you got the internship, okay? And then after that, when registration opens up, I'll send you um, an email with the CRN numbers, the course number and section numbers that you need to register for. Okay, the internship is nine hours, okay? So you're gonna have to register, and students get confused about this part, because we had one student just in, uh, register for one section. Well, he's not gonna get full credit for the nine hours, because he only registered for three hours, okay? So the internship is counted as nine hours, so you have to register for three sections, okay? And I will send you that information, the CRN numbers, the course number and the section numbers. And usually it's gonna be one, two, and three, okay? Now, in the fall and spring, it's the full term, okay? It's the full semester. Summer, it's 10 weeks. Now, it's 40 hours a week. So you're working 40 hours a week. Um, if it's in the summer, like I said, it's 10 weeks. Fall and spring, it's the full semester. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, so Dr. Dozer does approve for you to take 12 hours that semester. So let's just say this summer you're taking, um, you're doing your internship. You can take one additional class with that. So you can do a total of 12 hours for the summertime. He does prefer you to take an online class because it's hard to do a face-to-face -face when you're working 40 hours a week, okay? Um, some students ask if they could get a, um, if it's okay to get paid for your internship. Yes, you can, as long as you are not currently working in that position, okay? So let's just say you're at an agency, um, you're already doing working somewhere, and uh, I've had students ask, well, can I just use my job as my internship? No, you cannot, okay? You can work with that, um, at that place, but it has to be in a different role. It has to be a totally different job, okay? Does that all make sense? Okay, do we have any questions? Yes. Yes. So he asked if you were denied from one agency, can you apply to a different one? Yes, you can. So like right afterwards? Yes. No, you right afterwards. Yes. Yes, ma'am. No. No. You cannot apply for multiple internships at the same time. 
Okay. Any other questions? So the sooner the better. So if you think that you're going to apply for summer, you want to do your internship for summer, like we need to start at the beginning of the semester because it does take a while. It takes some students to find an internship. So the sooner the better. Um, I've already had students coming in and already applying for fall. So this spring, they're already, they're already looking forward and applying for fall. Okay, and I've had some students come in and they're already applying for spring 2021. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, because it's a year in advance, so we should have started like start at the beginning of the semester. Is it too late now? I don't no, I don't think so, right? So yes. She asked if it, she's applying for federal. Um, is it too late to apply right now? No, because we're still in the spring semester. So the sooner the better, though. Yes, because it's separate. So if you're already on your uh, degree plan to do an internship in the spring 2021, she's only going to advise you on the courses that you need to take. So this is totally separate than what she's advising you for your degree plan. Now, there are some places that do require uh, documentation from us. I just need that um, whoever you interviewed with, supervisor that may be, if you, they confirm that you got the internship, whoever it may be. They, um, some of them will require documentation from me. You just have to let me know or they can send me an email and I'll send them whatever documentation they're requesting. I know like Huntsville Police, I have to send them documents. Federal, I have to, I have to submit those. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. No, you can come to me. So if you're a graduate student um, and you want to do an internship, the pre-application, you can come see me for that. Especially if you're a security studies student, you can come see me. Because I can, I can do that. Yes. So basically, what is the approval? So for an agency that's not listed in the binder, like, does it have to go for approval through you or through Dr. Dozer to see if it will qualify or count towards? Dr. Dozer will have to approve that. So if you have something in mind. Um, you can write it on one of the forms, and then Dr. Dozer, whenever he's reviewing your application, um, then he'll, he can see that and he can approve that. Yes. <laughs> okay, so with an internship, like she said, it, um, it has to be security or, or, um, or law enforcement. It's, you're not going to Walmart a checkout person, okay? Something related in your field. I mean, within the CJ field. Yes. Shelly said it could be loss prevention. Right, right, it can. You just can't be a checkout clerk, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, it can be a law firm. Okay. Yes. If you're doing your internship this summer um, from the agency, um, I just need that approval or that confirmation before you can register. So the sooner the better. Yes, registration doesn't open until April. 
but there will be a spot. I mean, so even if you registered uh, for the internship, you know, in April or May, I mean, I'm sorry, in May, before summer starts, you still have time. Because it's not like you're fighting for a spot in the internship because, of course, you can do it. Okay, that's fine. As long as before summer starts, you're good. Any other questions about internships? Yes. It doesn't matter. You can go wherever. I have a student that's doing her internship over the summer in Wyoming. She's moving back home, and she's doing her internship with the um, law enforcement. So, no, it doesn't matter where it's at. Okay. Now, whenever you're out there and you're doing your internship, Dr. Dozer, if it's within driving distance, um, one of the uh, requirements when you're doing your internship is uh, the first assignment that's going to be due is a contact. So he's going to want us. He wants you to take a picture of wherever you're doing your internship at. It could be you in front of the door. Um, it could be you sitting at a desk doing work or whatever it may be. Okay, so that's going to be one of the first assignments is you're going to have to submit a picture of you at the doing your internship, and you're also going to need to submit uh, your supervisor's name and phone number and the address of the agency where you're um, currently doing your internship. Okay, so that's going to be the first assignment. And then from there, I take that information and give it to him, and then he's going to visit you at your job. So he's going to talk to your supervisor. How well is Daniel doing? Is he doing what he's supposed to be doing? Um, so he will check up on you um, at your internship. Yes, and then there's also other stuff that's going to be due, um, like you will have to, uh, there's going to be an evaluation. Your supervisor is going to have to evaluate. There's an evaluation form. Your supervisor will fill it out, and so Dr. Dozer will get that as well. Timesheets, there's timesheets on there. Um, you will have to fill out a timesheet, but at the agency, if they have their own timesheet that they want you to use, you can use theirs. And when you're sick, you call in sick, you're going to have to document that as well. It's just like you're at a, at a job. It, you, yes, he's going to treat it like you're at a job, and he's going to check up on you. Yes? If it's a paid internship, mm -hmm. is the school, at, like, are they paying us directly? Or no. Or are they paying the school to get the No. Okay. No. The eight, if you find a paid internship, that agency will pay you. We have one student um, that's doing um, an internship right now, and it, was a, uh, it wasn't paid, and she was doing such a good job. And this was at the beginning of the semester. She started off doing a really good job where they turned around and they asked if they could pay her. So it turned into a paid internship. And she, her supervisor called and asked if it was okay if they could pay her. And yes, they can. So you just never know what might happen. Yes? No, you cannot. So he asked if you can do an internship without going through the school. So if you do it on your own, you do not get credit for it. If you want credit for it, you have to come through us. Does anybody have any other questions? Yes, ma'am. It depends. Not all of them on the website are paid. Those the paid internships are hard to find. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Yes, you still have time to submit the documents and get it approved. And yes, you still have time. Yes, ma'am. She asked if it was too late to do an internship or apply for an internship this summer. No, it's not too late to submit the documents. Um, like I said earlier, the sooner the better because summer's right around the corner. Yes. 
Um, if you do get rejected, like, what is the application process? Do you have to, like, apply over again? or what the, I think the only way you're going to get rejected, or are you talking from an agency or through Dr. Dozer's approval or through an agency? Like, how do you apply for it? No, you can just go look for another one. Okay. Yes. She asked if she got if she if she got rejected from the agency, does she have to come back to me or can she just continue looking? She can just continue looking. But if you need help or um, we can always schedule an appointment with Dr. Dozer or you can email and um, and maybe he can assist you and help you kind of point you in the right direction just because he has a lot of connections so therefore he can you know he knows more about who might have an opening or something like that what if we get rejected through the internship office the only way you're going to get rejected is if you're a gp if you don't meet the gpa requirements or you don't have enough hours or Okay, so Shelly said on the pre-screening form, the, another way to get rejected is on that pre-screening form. If you have a class A or class... I mean, you have a criminal history or you have an A or B misdemeanor or something. Okay, did y'all hear that? Class A or B misdemeanor or um, you just have a criminal uh, record. And that's on the pre-screening form. I, I know earlier you mentioned not to apply to more than two agencies. Would it still be ideal to do it just in case, to have a backup, in case the first one rejects you or, or doesn't, doesn't approve you? You can have a backup. He just, we just don't re, um, like for students to apply for multiple ones at one time. But you can, you know, let's just say Huntsville Police, if they reject you, okay, what's your back? Like you can have something else in mind, okay? Any other questions? No other questions? Okay, so everybody knows where you're going to make your appointments? Yes? Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we're on the next part of this uh, presentation on internships. Uh, let me uh, move on to that right now. Okay, so this is what I want you to know about internships, people. Uh, I probably don't need to tell you all this. this I don't know, hey. But I tell every student that I see in my office, do not graduate without an internship if you can help it. Don't graduate without one because that's not in your best interest. And I'm about to tell you why. So whether you, so you can do an internship whether it's for credit or whether it's not for credit. Or you can do a for credit one and a not for credit one, okay? Um, because, I'm about to tell you that. Okay, why? Because when you, uh, job, if you want a job, the job search process is competitive. All right, so you're going to compete against other people. So one of the reasons you want to get a, uh, an internship or multiple internships is so that you can now have experience you can put on your resume that makes you more competitive than the other people applying for the job you're going to apply to. It's a way to investigate a career. Many people in criminal justice tell me they want occupations that are investigative related. Well, this is an investigation and it's about you. All right, so if you're not motivated to investigate stuff that's in your own best interest, that speaks a lot to what you're gonna be really ready or capable of in investigating for someone else. So look at this as if it's an investigation, because it is an investigation into your future. All right, employers like it. 
They like to know that you did an internship. Why? Because they know that you have attained some skills through that internship that you would not have gained if you didn't do it. So that makes their job easier. It makes their investment a better investment. All right, you can obviously, like I said, get stuff you can put on your resume. I get a lot of resumes where students are uh, insecure because they feel like, well, I really don't have any work history that's related to this field that I want to go into. Well, if you do some internships, you will. I'm going to give you an example of a student who, she wasn't a CJ major, but I see students out of all majors. But she's one of the best examples of this that I can give you. This student started doing internships beginning her freshman year. And she did one every summer thereafter. Did an internship, got another internship, got another internship. So when I see people in my office, they're telling me how much money they want to get paid. And oftentimes, they're surprised to find out they're not going to get the, the salary that they really would like. <clears throat> So now this particular student, she did four internships related to her major. She worked on campus as a teaching assistant in her major. Her part-time job was in her major. When she got ready to graduate, she was offered a position before she ever graduated. That spring semester, she had already been offered. And the salary that she was going to get was 80000 How did that happen? Why? Well, because she had all this experience. And every employer she interned with offered her a job. She actually had real experience that most students don't have that she could put on her resume. And so that's how uh, and it was so competitive that if the company wanted her, they had to offer her. Um, <clears throat> like a professional already in the field. So that's another reason why internships become very important. Uh, because you can't demand a certain salary if they can't back up why they should pay you that much. All right. Um, it's a fantastic way to network. <clears throat> Even if that particular employer doesn't hire you, by working with them, you get to meet people in the profession on a regular basis. Or they get to maybe tell you, oh, OK, well, we can't hire you, but you know who you might need to talk to. You, there's, they're a source of references. You have to submit references when you apply for a job. So internship people are professional people in your field that could write a professional reference for you. Letters of recommendation. That's a good place to get a letter of recommendation directly related to the field that you want to work in. Those are all fantastic reasons why you should do an internship. And I don't, I don't like to see people graduate without one. Some students will tell me, well, I have to work. And I get that. I, I get that you have to work. But I also want you to look at what of some of that trade-off. Is there some kind of way you can work this out? Because if you were going to go to class, nine hours worth of classes, there was some trade-off there where you had to go to class, right? So look at it uh, in terms of, of what you can get out of it, why it's worth it, and really try to go that extra mile to make sure that it happens. It can help you decide if a particular career is actually a good fit or not. So a lot of times people think, oh, they want to do this kind of particular job. And they don't find out until they get into the job for real that I really don't like that. I hate it. And many students tell me they want a job that they actually enjoy. So again, doing an internship in your field. That might help you figure that out. Oh, I thought I wanted to do this field work, but now that I'm in the field, I don't really like it. It's not a good fit for me. I thought I wanted to do victim's advocacy, but now that I have to deal with people going through traumatic situations every day, I don't know if I can take that on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know if I can leave it on the job. 
and then come home and relax without thinking about what's going on with these people day in and day out. Am I willing to pay that price? So those are just a couple examples. This is how employers look at internships. So when it comes down, and they're going to look at your resume and all that kind of stuff. But they're going to see multiple candidates. So now when it gets down to where they're choosing one candidate over another, this is where uh, some of the things that employers say they use to decide, OK, which of these last two people are we going to choose? Was your internship with them? Did you do an internship with them and the other person didn't? Well, they're more inclined to go with the person who did the internship with them. Why? Because they can talk to various people within their company about how you performed on the job and be a lot more comfortable about hiring you than somebody they don't have any history with. Um, well, if you didn't do an internship with us, have they done an internship at all? Again, OK, so even if they didn't do it with us, Oh, I can see where they did one over here. We, re we respect that uh, particular company. And if they've given them a great review, yeah, well then when we're comparing them with somebody who hasn't done an internship at all, that gives them an added plus. Uh, major, of course, comes into play. But you can see major isn't number one when it comes to this kind of thing. Has the person ever held a leadership position? Why? That speaks to responsibility. So if you've never had a leadership uh, position, you might want to consider that, because employers do look at that. And it matters to them. It's a skill that they, that they look for. Um, have they had some work experience? So for all the people who tell me they want to work for the FBI, let me address that. One of the reasons why the FBI doesn't particularly like hiring people right out of college, and rarely does it, is because they feel they have not had the experience working in a variety of settings, engaging with a lot of different types of people, having to encounter uh, things they need to adapt to. Uh, they can't measure how hardworking are they. If you haven't had very much work experience, well, we don't know if you're a hard worker or not. If you haven't had to be put in a variety of different situations, we don't know if, they have to, if, if that person is capable of dealing with the kinds of things they may experience on a day-to-day -day basis in doing this job. So having work experience, that's the next thing. Oh, this, this person has work experience. This person doesn't. This person has this much work experience. This person. Not so much. Um, if, have you been involved in any extracurricular activities? That's another one of the things uh, when I'm meeting people as, as they are freshmen that I tell them don't graduate without doing. If you're an online student, that includes you. Because online students typically do not get engaged. And that, so they're at a disadvantage because they can't demonstrate any kind of extracurricular stuff. People going to graduate school, that's another, um, that's another thing that they look for in applicants for graduate school also. Um, it, it speaks to a lot of different things, different kinds of experiences again. Um, it speaks to your ability to prioritize. Uh, it speaks to how involved are you in the community, and criminal justice being involved with the community is an important thing. All right, so all of that, all of that is, and is looked at and measured when they have to choose one candidate over another candidate. What if you have no work experience at all? I get people in my office that say, well, my parents says, this is my job. And it is to some extent, being a student is a job. But if you want to get hired when you get out of school and you haven't worked at all, when they look at your resume, they're going to be asking, well, what has this person been doing over the past four years? You can't go on all the stuff you did when you were in high school. That stuff doesn't count anymore. So having some work experience is very important. Even, and, and you can explain that to your parents if you have a parent that 
That's, that's what they're saying. Um, GPA, as you can see how far down the GPA thing is. So I tell uh, all my people who, for whatever reason, they may not have a three-point GPA. Well, don't, don't die over it. Don't, don't, don't kick yourself over it. You know, obviously, if you can raise it, raise it. But it's not the end all. It doesn't mean people are not going to hire you. Especially, say, if you had all the other stuff that's above that on this list, OK? Then you have some things to compete with that are not, that's not your GPA. Um, what school you attended? Well, in the field of criminal justice, uh, Sam carries a lot of weight in terms of what school you attended. So that's one of the things you don't even have to worry about in terms of that, because here you are getting your degree at Sam. Uh, have you ever done any volunteer work? Volunteer work can be a part of your resume, because whatever you still need to use skills to do volunteer work. They're just not paying you. But they're taking advantage of skills that you have. And so you can list that on your resume as well. Are you fluent in a foreign language? That's particularly uh, important more and more in criminal justice, just because of the, you know, how the world is these days. And living in Texas, it's, it's another thing. You know, in, in Texas, lots of people in Texas speak languages that are not English. So if you can have multiple languages, that's another thing that could be an added perk for you when they're choosing one candidate over another candidate. Uh, people who are leaving, make sure you fill out that form and leave it on the little uh, thing in the back before you leave. Um, other, that can be a lot of stuff. All right, uh, and, and has studied abroad, that's another one. Why? Why? Studying abroad, that means you've had engagement with other cultures outside of the United States. And we have a lot of cultures that are within the United States. It'll help you engage with people who are from somewhere else. So those are some, um, some things for you to take into consideration of the impact of your internship and another reason why you should do it. And other things that you could be doing before you graduate that could help influence whether you get a job or not. How do you find an internship is another question that I get frequently in my office. And so I'm gonna address that for a minute. Uh, think of it like most investigations. Well, rarely does the answer to the investigation just land in your lap. And the same thing with internships. You know, there no, nobody's going to say, here, here, well, not too often is that going to happen. It's not just going to land in your lap. So you have to be motivated to face that challenge and say, I'm going to investigate this, because you want an internship that's right for you, that's connected to the thing you would like to do. So that's why the Walmart thing, you know, that's not going to help you if you want to go into law enforcement. How bad do you want this internship piece? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want the career that you say you want to have? Do you want it bad enough to investigate where can I get my foot in the door? Because that's another thing an internship is. It's going to help you get your foot in the door. It's not, you know, OK, I'm going to wish that I can, I can intern with the FBI, and I'm, I'm, so I'm going to. It doesn't happen that way. Uh, so what you're going to do, you're going to identify where would you like to have the internship experience. So if you never looked at any list, if you never saw a list, one of the things you're going to do to start this investigation is ask yourself, if I could intern anywhere I would like, where would it be? Who would it be with? Because that's where the investigation is going to start. You're going to try to contact wherever that is. And you're going to look for the clues everywhere you can find them. So you're going to look everywhere. You're not just going to sit back and wait for somebody to give it to you. One of the things you can do is attend a networking event. I 
JE, the CJ Career Fair is coming up, which is why we wanted to do this presentation before the Career Fair actually happened. So now you have an additional motivation, an additional goal when you're going in there of things you want to talk to the recruiters about. Do they have an internship? If so, what type and what are the qualifications? What do you have to do? to qualify for that internship. So everybody in here, I expect when you, is everybody going to the fair? Say yes. yes. Say it like you mean it. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay, because you know, that's part of the how bad do you want it part. It's like, do you really believe it? Do you believe you want to do this? Do you believe you're going to do this? All right, so then it, you should be able to engage, converse with conviction. This is something I'd really like to do, and here's why. That's what you could tell a recruiter, by the way. Okay? All right. So that's going to be your first thing in this investigation. You're going to go to the career fair uh, in two days. It's here. And you're going to ask some questions. You're going to start your investigation, everybody, okay? If I see you in the hall, I want some feedback. Okay. You're going to conduct some informational interviews. Who knows what that is? OK, I'll tell you. All right, what is an informational interview? Well, remember what I said. We were going to start this investigation, and we're going to think about if I could do it anywhere I wanted to, where would it be? So this is what you do after you figure that out. You go online, you read an article, you something, and you find that place. And then you contact them. And you let them know, hey, I am a student at Sam Houston State University. I'm majoring in criminal justice, and I really have an interest in, and I wanted to know if there's someone on your staff I could interview about. What is it like to work in this profession? OK? Say you want to be a detective, I'll use that one. I'd like to be a detective. And so you contact a police department and say, you know, is there a, a detective on staff that I could possibly interview? I'm a student at SAM. I'm really interested in that field. Recruiters, CJ Career Fair, there are some the detectives at that. Could I interview you? And then once they say yes, the worst thing that they could say is no. I've never asked for one that I didn't get. Okay, if the speaker comes, talks in your class, ask. So anyway, you ask for it, and then you put together your questions. You're not going in there to ask for a job, okay? Because remember, you said you were asking to interview them. So take the pressure off. And you go in there, and you genuinely ask questions about that profession. What's your job like on a day-to-day -day basis? What's your favorite thing about it? What do you like least about it? How long have you been doing it? Is there anything you do differently? How long does it take you know, to, to grow in the field or get promoted? What are the things that you would like to know? If I wanted to work in this field, what are some things I could be doing now to help me be a more viable candidate? OK, so do some informational interviews. Sometimes when you do an informational uh, interview, um, the, despite the fact you didn't ask for a job, sometimes they'll offer you things. They'll tell you somebody else to go, to go talk to. That happened to me a couple times. Um, went in, did my little informational interview, you know, we talked, and, and at the end, oh, you know what? There's a couple people I want you to talk to. I didn't solicit that, but that is how it ended. And some of it, one was, you know, I, I was a communications major. One of them was a general manager at a television station. Now, I couldn't have just got an interview with somebody like that just because I said, hey, you know what I'm saying? So that's, they're, these things, they can work. Will you get everyone? Maybe not. But it's worth a try. Remember I said, how bad do you want it, right? And you have to ask yourself that. 
Talk to speakers and recruiters when they visit CJ. We have recruiters here all the time. Have conversations with them. Don't just walk past them in the lobby. We've got some great speakers that come in here in the courtroom. Talk to them. Don't just get up and leave when it's over. Get up and go talk to them. Ask can you have their car. See if you could possibly do an informational interview with them, okay? Don't be intimidated. If they didn't want to engage with you, they never would have come to Sam to talk in the first place, okay? Address that on your LinkedIn page. Your LinkedIn page is designed to mark, do networking for you 24 seven around the world. So on your LinkedIn page, it should be saying, you know, student of Sam uh, Houston State, I'm really interested in identifying a criminal justice related internship. People go on there and screen people all the time. All right, people network back and forth. So somebody in your network may be able to give you a lead. Companies go on and look in there. So a company may go on there and decide to contact you. Read professional articles because they give you a source of people you can contact. Attend conferences. If you've never attended a conference, lots of networking goes on at conferences. There's a conference that happens in the spring in uh, Bryan, and it's full of criminal justice related people. It's called the Every Victim, Every Time Conference. And it's a relatively cheap conference to go to. It's not one of those ones that count, cost hundreds of dollars. As a matter of fact, I think it, it costs less than $100. It's, it's pretty cheap. I forget exactly what it is now but it's pretty cheap. It might be something like $45 or something like that. But there are people, uh, there are investigators, attorneys, uh, social workers, you name it, just all, all range of people involved in, in uh, criminal justice at that conference, and it's close. Join professional organizations, not just student organizations. A lot of professional organizations have a cheap, uh, membership for students and in their material and on their websites oftentimes they'll talk about job openings internships things like that so join some things ask within this department I asked some students hey have you ever talked to your faculty member about what you want to do guess what most students tell me nope you're right they tell me no, and I'm like, well, why not? It's a resource here for you, use it. Okay, anywhere you can think of, you can use it to try to identify an internship. So this is one of the reasons, whether you do the internship 101 or whether you do some extra ones leading up to that, okay. The deal with if, I don't know how many SAM uh, criminal justice majors we have, but it's a lot. So what is, if everybody's looking at that same list that's in the internship office, that means everybody's competing for that same list worth of internships. So one of the advantages of you thinking outside the box is you may be able to identify an internship that's not on that list. And they're having increased percentage-wise advantage in getting that internship. So think of it like that. Everybody is, if, if they're all competing for the FBI internship, guess what? Most of the people applying for it aren't getting it. Think outside the box which you have to do to be an, an effective investigator, by the way. What kind of an investigator would you be if you only counted on somebody running up to you and telling you where to look for the criminal? Okay, think of it like that. How strong are your skills? 
here are some ideas. You can check on jobs for cats. You can look on employment search engines. You can read professional, uh, go to perfect organizations and publications. State, municipal, and federal websites. State of Texas, city of Huntsville. I could go on and on and on. Look on their website, see what do they have. Write them and see that they have internships, because sometimes they don't say. But some of them say right on it, internship info. School districts. School districts employ CJ-related folks. Um, job fairs other than the CJ career fair. Community, uh, cable community access channels, unemployment agencies, churches, company websites are awesome. If you look at the teeny tiny print, usually way down at the bottom of the website. So, um, so you can work in law enforcement. I have some people who say, hey, I'm really interested in investigating, but I don't think I want to be a police officer. Think private sector. In this day and age, the private sector are looking for people who can investigate white collar crime. OK? Have you ever contacted one? Maybe done an informational interview with them. Wonder if maybe, hey, I'm, I'm interested in um, white collar crime. Is, could I possibly come an intern, shadow, interview someone, OK? So I'm trying to get you to think outside the box. Don't just think of what everybody thinks. That's how you may get an opportunity that's a fantastic opportunity. Because there, now, you know, there's, uh, there are opportunities with almost every corporation there is. Because, you know, unfortunately, our society is full of people doing things they aren't supposed to be doing. OK, support is here for you. And so those are some resources for on-campus support. You know I'm here in this building every Tuesday and Thursday. If you are a commuter or an online person, I do have hours on Fridays in the Woodlands. I can do an online Zoom appointment. So there's no reason why, if you need to meet with me, that you can't do it. And that concludes my presentation. Do you have any questions? You all did good, by the way, asking all those questions earlier. Super fantastic. Um, very impressed. That was great. All right, so please fill out that little form that I gave you and turn it in uh, on the little table in the back. And I'll see you on Thursday for the Filling Out Law Enforcement Application Seminar. A lot of people get eliminated from the hiring process in how they fill out the application. Thank you for coming.